It's 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 all fuzzy. Which words does Will Smith choose in his alleged apology? How do these words betray him? And what does his betrayal tell us about his apology? I'll analyze Will's speech behavior using principles from statement and conversation analysis. I'll make a few comparisons to his written apology and his acceptance speech along the way. If you like the video, click the like button. And if you're interested in the mechanics of interviews and conversations, subscribe for more videos. Welcome to the channel. In your acceptance speech. Um, it's, 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 it's all fuzzy. In his acceptance speech, however, Will wasn't too confused to apologize to other people. I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to my, all my fellow nominees. Thank you. I uh, uh, hope the Academy invites me back. Thank you. <laughs> so it couldn't all have been fussy which is the self-protective word or excuse he uses. I've reached out to Chris um, and the, mes the message that came back is that uh, he's not ready to talk. And when he is, he will reach out. Will was asked about why he didn't apologize to Chris in his acceptance speech. But with the present perfect, I've reached. Will avoids dealing with why he didn't apologize in the moment. Apparently, he's more comfortable describing actions that took place after the fact. Um, so I will, I will say to you, um, Chris, I apologize to you. Uh, my behavior was unacceptable and I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. On a surface level, the latter part of Will's apology has direct and reliable word structure. On a deeper level, however, two things should be noted. One, he's had a long time to think about this apology. This isn't a spontaneous or willing action on his part. And two, he initiates this apology with the words, I will say to you. First of all, this shows self-awareness of the apology he's giving, the words he uses. And secondly, it's a possible indicator of resistance, which is reinforced by the pauses, even within the same terms. So I will, I will say to you, um, Chris, I apologize to you. In his written apology, Will engaged in similar speech actions. Notice that he doesn't simply write, I apologize. He writes he would like to publicly apologize to Chris giving his apology a more formal and less straightforward tone. Distance between a grammatical subject and a verb indicates resistance. Here, there's a four-word distance, and with the word publicly, it's implied that he has apologized to Chris privately. Um, I, I want to apologize to Chris's mother. I saw an interview that Chris's mother did, and... You know, that was one of the things about that moment. I just didn't realize and, you know, I wasn't thinking, but how many people got hurt in that moment. This is one of many times where Will uses the expression, you know, you know, presupposes a shared agreement that what the speaker is saying is true. It shows a high level of self-awareness, which corresponds to the syntactic structure of his apology so far. And as we'll see in a moment, the self-awareness outweighs the supposed heartfelt nature of this apology. Two times he uses the noun moment. He doesn't say my action or something similar. He doesn't show or take ownership. It's just that moment. This is distancing language. I wasn't thinking is self-protective word choice once again. This linguistic self-defense is about to get even more prominent. In the following, notice how he makes the situation sound complicated, suggesting the existence of reasons for what he did. I spent the last three months um, replaying and understanding the nuances and, and the complexities of what happened in, in that moment. Um, and I'm not going to try to unpack all of that right now, but I can say to all of you, there is no part of me that thinks that was the right way
to behave in that moment. A few things about this revealing passage. Will uses plural nuances and complexities. The plural form highlights that his action wasn't simply about him and his decision. He says he's not going to unpack all of that right now, suggesting that there are things to unpack, just not right now, which is the time restriction he uses. Could he be hinting at a time when he will unpack these complexities and nuances? Probably yes. Unsurprisingly, all of that makes it sound like there's a lot to unpack. We should note how he phrases it. He says he's been trying to understand the nuances, presupposing that there are nuances to understand. He uses his own presumed attempts to understand the nuances, to appeal to his fans and the rest of us. He wants us to understand the nuances, or know that there are nuances to what he did. Because since he doesn't detail these nuances, this isn't a logical appeal, but an emotional one. Overall, this is a preface to his main statement, which is initiated with a contrasting conjunction, but followed by the words I can say to all of you. The verb can again underlines an alleged restriction on what he's able to say, most likely because he knows that unpacking whatever he's holding back, or is pretending to hold back, would be damaging and or unreliable. In a linguistic analysis, you look at how people word things, but you also look at how they don't word things, which is just as interesting. Will doesn't simply say, I behaved poorly or my behavior was wrong. He chooses to phrase this in the negative, thus suggesting that it's actually been on his mind that his actions are somewhat justifiable. This pattern continues. There's no part of me that thinks that's the optimal way to handle a feeling of disrespect or, or insults. With the adjective optimal, he indicates that it was a way of handling disrespect and insults, just not an optimal one. He could have said was a way, but he chooses to say was an optimal way. Words express people's real thoughts. Also, he gets to mention a feeling of disrespect or insults. This shows how Will actually and still feels about Chris's joke. Also, it's a likely, intentionally vague excuse for why he acted the way he did. Next, when asked about Jada's reaction, it's highly sensitive to Will to claim that she had nothing to do with it. Notice his tone of voice, trying to make even the suggestion sound silly. After Jada rolled her eyes, did she tell you to do something? No. Um, it's like... You know, I'm, I made a choice on my own, from my own experiences, from my history with Chris. Jada had nothing to do with it. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. He again hints at the idea that his actions were justifiable. He starts by presumably taking responsibility, saying he made a choice on his own. But then he says that the choice was from his own experiences and history with Chris. So far, it's clear that Will's apology is far from being straightforward and heartfelt. It's designed to portray Will in the best light possible. If you want to know more about the connection between Will's actions and Jada's statements in the Red Table Talk, I've made this video. Link is in the description. What would you say to the people who looked up to you? So there's two things. One, um disappointing people is my central trauma. Here we start getting to the bottom of why Will's apology sounded strategic as opposed to heartfelt. Disappointing people is the real issue, or as Will says, his central trauma. What Chris went through isn't Will's central trauma, apparently. Trauma refers to severe mental and emotional stress. Will uses this word and its connotations to highlight his own alleged suffering. He details this point in the following. Um, I hate when I let people down. Um, so it, it hurts. Uh, it hurts me psychologically and emotionally to know I didn't live up to uh, people's image and impression of me. Overall, his statements more than indicate that he's sad that the persona he's created online has been damaged or ruined. He doesn't sound sad about his action itself, 
but about what his actions led to. Next, this point is further emphasized. And the work I'm trying to do is I am deeply remorseful and I'm trying to be remorseful without being ashamed of myself, right? I'm human and I made a mistake. The linguistic self-defense we've observed since the beginning is now on full display. He minimizes his alleged remorse by saying that he's trying not to be ashamed of himself. He even refers to the blatantly obvious and hence ridiculous fact that he's human, a human who made a mistake. Normally, I would say this is association and a fishing for sympathy tactic, which it is on a word level. On a perception level, however, Will shows that he's not the best at reading a room, understanding how the minimization negates his preceding apology and how stating the obvious is an insult to most people's intelligence. Linguistic self-protective strategies mean nothing without sincerity. So I would say to those people, I know it was confusing. I know it was shocking. Um, but I, I promise you, I am uh, deeply devoted and committed to putting light and love and joy into the world. The adjective confusing is interesting as it's connected to what he said earlier about it all being fussy and all the things he wasn't able to unpack, the supposed complexities and nuances, as if there were deeper things going on, but that he notably doesn't go into. He doesn't say he knows it was wrong. Confusing is an unexpected word choice. The function of the conjunction but is to minimize or even negate the preceding statement. If you're a regular on this channel, you'll know I've said this once or twice, or a hundred times before. So here, Will minimizes and negates what he calls confusing and shocking to instead emphasize the claim to being deeply committed to putting light, love, and joy into the world. This is vague and self-glorifying language, which echoes his at times grandiose word choice in his acceptance speech. I am overwhelmed by what God is calling on me to do and be in this world. I'm being called on in my life to love people and to protect people and to be a river to my people. I've made in-depth videos of Will's written apology, acceptance speech, and red table talk. Check my videos and playlists. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe. And please don't forget to leave a comment to let us know what you think about this apology. In this business, you got to be able to have people disrespecting you. And you got to smile and you got to pretend like that's okay. Love will make you do crazy things.